Coming up on MHS One, we show you the right way. Students head to Allen to take a swing at Top Golf, and we invade the home of Mr. Bayer's friend. And it's all coming up on MHS One. Good morning, McKinney High School. I'm Bill Dodds. And I'm Charlie Hollis Finks, and you're watching MHS One. In an effort to improve students' writing skills, the school has implemented a new program. After a few weeks, Austin Tankersley, Sarah Wilson, and Christine Baker show us how the right way is working. The new writing initiative at McKinney High School, The Right Way, is taking over 30 minutes of every student's life weekly. So why do we have to do this? When you talk about um, needs outside of a high school a building, a lot of uh, businesses, companies, employers will talk about the importance of writing, whether it's a, a simple email. Uh, the ability to write is, is very, very important. They're trying to get us more prepared for college, like getting ready to start having to like write more problems. Since we're in the era of text messaging and emails and we're seeing words like LOL instead of laugh out loud or the, the, the grammar and those forms of communication um, are not at the level they need to be beyond high school and so um, we've taken upon ourselves to, uh, to do what's best for all kids. Well I'd like to say that this is kind of pointless for the kids that are in AP English that actually write a lot every single week. If you don't write, you could probably see that we have what's called a writing corral behind me here and uh, kids will come out with myself and we will make you write. You will sit and you will write. Not all students feel this way. Um, I think it's good that we're writing them. I think it will help us on our tax stuff if we get kind of used to writing in tax form because we haven't because we only do that for text test. Besides improving writing skills, what else are students getting out of this? Every week you turn in a paper and you're scored one, two, three, four. If you get a one, you get one raffle ticket. If you get a two, you get two, three, three, four, four. Um, you fill out the raffle ticket, it goes into the drawing, and we draw prizes each month. Seniors are going to win a senior ad in the yearbook and a ticket to homecoming. Juniors are going to win a class ring um, t so that they can have their class ring taken care of and a homecoming, a ticket to homecoming. Tenth graders are going to get a yearbook. They're going to have a yearbook sponsored to a tenth grader plus a homecoming ticket. And then um, English One is going to be some McKinney High School paraphernalia, a shirt, um, a sweatshirt, a cap, and then a ticket to homecoming. Because we really want our, our uh, freshmen to have all of the uh, paraphernalia from McKinney High. This has been Christine Baker, Sarah Wilson, and Austin Tankersley reporting for MHS One. Thanks, guys. Next month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Christian Snyder and Sarah Martin gives us the story on one survivor's return to MHS. AP English 3 teacher Miss Norell went through a life-changing experience last year when she was gone for several months out of the school year. I had had a normal day at school. It was wonderful, perfectly uh, good day, except I had laryngitis. Ms. Norell went to her doctor to get a mammogram and she figured out that she had a lot more than laryngitis. I thought about reality and it was like something just spoke to me and I knew that I had cancer. The tumor I had was very small, less than two centimeters, which is not very big. That usually makes it stage one. But as things progressed and when I had surgery and whatever, it turned out it was in my lymph nodes and it actually was stage three. We asked Ms. Norell how friends and family helped her get through those hard times in her life. I literally got so that I could barely walk across the room. I had no strength. My white count was down extremely low. 
After battling breast cancer, Ms. Norell is back and teaching a new set of students. At that point, when you've been to chemo and you've been through radiation and a lot of the treatments, you have seen people in various states and stages, and I know I am incredibly fortunate. Her former students were also glad to see her back. It's really great to have Ms. Norell back. She's a really sweet person. It's really nice to hear her stories if you have her in class, so I'm just happy she's back. This has been Christian Schneider and Sarah Martin reporting for MHS One. In case you missed last Wednesday's college fair, here's Jessup Town and Devin McGuire to show you what you missed. As the new year starts, students begin to focus not only on their education, but on their future as well. Last Wednesday night, McKinney ISD's college fair helped inform many students on their options ahead. The purpose of the college night is for anybody who's a junior or a senior to really come in and uh, talk to a college representative from their choice of higher education school to either uh, talk to them about what does their college offer, talk to them about scholarships, talk to them about opportunities, what that college specializes in. It's really all about getting comfortable with finding out what your options are for beyond high school. Uh, not just colleges, but we also have a couple of vocational schools and also we have all four of our armed services represented here tonight. The competition for acclaimed schools encourages students to attend college tonight and prepare for higher education. It's important to start looking early so that you get motivated to perform well in high school because it's so difficult to get into A&M. So if you don't start studying, performing at a high level, preparing for your SATs or ACTs, taking the right coursework, uh, you will not only be able to get into A&M, but you'll have difficulty uh, performing when you get there. We approach Marty on how to impress colleges. I think that you just need to be yourself. You know, um, if you're going to be specifically interested in a college, let them know that you're interested and why you're interested, and then get some information from that school. When is their college visit? What are their deadlines? What kind of scholarships are they offering? While students fill out information for colleges, colleges also seek information on students. The new barcode system was revealed that college night. If students pre-registered at www.texascollegefairs.org, they will be able to print out a barcode and rather than stand in line and fill out a little informational card, they'll be able to just scan their information into that scanner and that way the colleges will have a list of all of your information, your ACT scores, your SAT scores, but I, I think it's a good idea. I'm, I'm all for technology. This has been Devin McGuire and Jessup Town reporting for MHS1. This year, the administration has done away with in-school suspension. That's right. Maddie Derryberry and Mason Lane have the inside scoop on CBISS. As of this year, McKinney High School no longer has an in-school suspension policy. In absence of this, we now have CBISS, or Campus Behavior Intervention Success Strategies. Here's Mr. Franks with more. CBISS is for those students who are showing a persistence of saying, hey, I don't have to follow the rules. I don't have to be to class on time. If I'm not to class on time, I don't have to serve detention. Well, we want them to be to class on time. Uh, CBISS, there are a number of activities, including your class work that you're going to be responsible for. There's a report that has to be done about how you're going to be successful when you get out of CBISS. And there's going to be service projects that are going to be done by the students in the CBISS, such as some of those during lunch will help clean up in the cafeteria. It could include cleaning up outside, doing some work like that. It could include doing some work for some different teachers that need that work done in the classrooms. It could even include uh, working some with the custodians. So that's a bit of a punitive piece but it's considered a service project so that the kids can get back to their school versus show hey i don't have to follow the rules and messing up at school you know we asked a few students to give us their opinions on the new policy i think the labor projects are unconstitutional and terrible i don't even know what cbis is in the past years, ISS has normally lasted a minimum of three days, but with CBISS's new point system, it could be much shorter depending on your behavior and points accounted for. Letting the parents know, hey, this is, this is what they've done. They've, they've done every, they've worked on their classwork and completed it. They participated in a service project. They've uh, 
they've been on time getting down there. They have uh, met the dress code coming in. They've done all those things that are asked of them in there and they earn their points for the day. They have the ability to earn their way out in three days rather than having to stay five days to earn their points. This has been Maddie Derryberry and Mason Lane reporting for MHS1. Now here's Jamie Weiss with sports. Thanks guys. The varsity football team played a tough match against Wiley last Thursday at home. In the end, the Lions came up short with a score of 22 to 41. The Lions' next game is tonight against Rockwell Heath at 7.30. In tennis news, the Lions and Lionettes have been training hard under the direction of their new coach. Here's Cole, Ben, and Ethan with the story. Coach Chin, who is he? We came to these tennis courts to find out who the new assistant coach is. Uh, I'm Jason Chin. I teach chemistry and I'm an assistant tennis coach. Coach Chin explains how he became the assistant tennis coach. Uh, it wasn't like a decision, you know, because of all the uh, budget cuts that we had in the last year, um, things had to be rearranged. I was an extra basketball coach last year, and because they needed an assistant for this sport, and I was on campus as staff, as a coach, they asked me to, and I was happy to jump on board. He was uh, one of the assistant girls basketball coaches last year. He's been around athletics for years, you know, played in different sports growing up as well as coach. And this year he is uh, thrown into a completely different realm with tennis. He's never played tennis before, but he's picking up really quickly. And it's really nice to see how he's taking his knowledge of other sports and applying it to tennis. Uh, the team is actually doing a lot better uh, than last year. It's definitely a step up. We are uh, improving with conditioning. Um, I'm really focusing on the conditioning and footwork for the squad and we can see a big difference, uh, especially after they played their first matches. The parents and the coaches were all noticing that our kids are ready to go for their second match, whereas other teams are they're gasping for air. So definitely seeing a lot bigger improvement. We asked him how he liked being the assistant tennis coach. Oh, I enjoy it. Um, it's a lot of fun. You know, at first it's a new sport. You know, coaching, so I was a little nervous, but uh, we came on, and I, my role is to be more responsible for the conditioning and footwork skills, and it, it's paying off. It's been Ethan Deshays, Cole Murray, and Ben Tatum reporting for MHS1. That's all for sports. Now back to you. Thanks, Jamie. This weekend, the drumline competed in the annual Plano drumline competition. Here's Eli J and Luke Lauterbach with more. Last Saturday, the McKinney High Royal Pride Band Drumline faced off against 12 other schools at the Plano Drumline Competition. I feel the drumline's really coming along. Uh, from where we were last year at this point, we're a huge step forward. And I really think that we have a lot of good things going on and only minor flaws. But once we get those flaws fixed, we're sure to go far. Our front ensemble section is playing really well together. We've corrected some of the problems we had in the past. Our bass lines are playing really well, our snail line all plays together, and our tenors are sound really well. Although the Royal Pride Band played and fought hard, they faced a hard loss. Well, I think nerves got the best of us uh, this past Saturday, but um, every competition we do, we gain a little bit more experience and a little bit more confidence, and we're going to take that into our future performances. The students have done a fantastic job this year. Um, we've gotten so much better from last year to this year, and uh, I'm really excited for what they've done and what they're going to do. We still have a lot of drumming left to do this season, um, and I'm excited to see where they go from here. This has been Eli J. and Luke Lauterbach reporting for MHS One. Students have flocked to Top Golf to work on their swing. Here's Grant Yoder, Taylor Lowry, and Emily Brightman with the story. Opening over the summer, Top Golf has become a new hit attraction to McKinney High students. It offers a place to hang out, great food, and a new spin on an old game. The golf balls actually have microchips in them, and as you hit them into the targets, there are readers within the targets. And as the ball goes into the target, it is tied to your name, so you get points associated with the target that you hit into. Uh, I heard about Top Golf through uh, uh, some of my friends went uh, with their dad, actually, and uh, they were. Uh, they thought it was pretty cool, so they told me I should come out here. Students come to Top Golf because they can hang out and have fun while playing a relaxing game. Uh, just people used to check in here a lot on Facebook, and everybody talked about it when it first opened. It just sounded like a lot of fun, so I just came up here. 
No, I, I like Top Golf because it's it's a it's a fun thing to do on a weekend. You come out here and it's kind of like bowling, but different. I like coming to Top Golf because me and my friends come out here. I'm not very good at golf, but we could still have a lot of fun embarrassing ourselves. This has been Taylor Lowry, Grant Yoder, and Emily Brennan reporting for MHS One. Hey Charlie, did you know the average honeybee will only make one to two teaspoons of honey in its lifetime? No, I didn't, but I did know that there's a honey company in North Texas. Here's Jed Rollins with more. North Dallas Honey is one of the largest honey manufacturers in the DFW area. Honey is a popular home remedy for allergies and many other medicinal uses. I had a chance to interview Nathan Sheets, the owner of North Dallas Honey, about this belief. <laughs> no, I'm joking. See, I don't have allergies because I eat lots of honey. Have you ever seen any bees with allergies? No, of course not. Because bees are eating and ingesting the local pollen. And so that's what a lot of people eat honey for, uh, especially raw and unfiltered honey, which has local pollen um, from vegetation. And so as, you're, as you begin to ingest that pollen that's in the unfiltered honey, then your body begins to develop its own antihistamines against, um, against you know, allergens and things like that. You know, what I think has always kind of been viewed as a wise tale um, of, of how honey can help with your allergies is, is really being shown. North Dallas Honey receives many testimonies from people throughout the North Dallas area about their experiences with the healing properties of honey. Allergies, um, they don't do much to me because I eat my dad's honey and it has all the different local pollens in it. And um, it, the more you eat it, the less you're going to have your allergies. But also beyond that, because it's raw, uh, which is in reference to the temperature that we heat the honey up to, we don't, we don't heat it over 140 degrees. And because of that, then the antioxidants, the enzymes, and the antibacterial properties are still inside of the honey and so the medicinal value of the honey I mean people use it for burns um, they use it for when they have sore throats to be able to coat their throat with that antibacterial property of honey so honey is one of those things it'll never mold it never goes bad and it never spoils I put honey on my ice cream on my toast on my cereal on tortillas and I think Anna just waterfall it a lot. <laughs> this has been Jed Rollins reporting for MHS One. This week we invaded the privacy of a very special teacher. Here's Matt Farmer and Max Parola with another teacher home invasion. MHS1, welcome to the Henry House. <laughs> hey. Hey. So, uh, all right. Come on in. My wife and I lived in Lubbock for the first two years that we were married and when we decided to move back to the Dallas area we needed to find a house that was halfway in between where she worked in Dallas and where I worked in McKinney High School and uh, so we chose Richardson. All right, so this room, this is where the magic happens. This is supposed to be a dining room, but you know what's a lot better than dining? We. So this is now the we room. We got our big comfy chairs right here, and that over there is the desk where I sit and give you Fs. F, F minus, F, F plus, F. Oh, this person did great. F, we have, um, Two dogs, one is named Wilhelmina and one is named Rilo and they are mutts and they are extremely happy and energetic all the time. And then we have two cats, one cat is named Molly and one cat is named Yoshimi and she battles the pink robots 
And then we have two snakes, and one of the snakes is named Gunasaki, and he is a boa constrictor. And the other snake is named Sashi, and she is a ball python. 997, 998, 999, and 1,000. Oh. oh, hi. I didn't see you there. This is a room with nothing in it. This is where I come to use the weight bench to keep my girlish figure. The most interesting thing about this house is its proximity to the biggest park in Richardson. And that's Breckenridge Park. Right across the street, just walk straight out our back door and you're right in the park. Miles of trails, ponds, uh, soccer fields, baseball fields, tons of space to go explore. It's pretty much the best thing about this house. So I'm glad that uh, you got to come see my house and meet my wife and meet our animals. Uh, but now, it's time to go for a little roll in the park. Whoa! This has been Matt Farmer and Max Prola reporting for MHS One. Sorry if I broke your mic. Well, that's all we have for you today. For more news, visit www.mainstreamnews.com. And remember, if it's news, and it's at McKinney High School, it's, it's MHS One. <laughs>